<laughs> so putting them back together so they're close enough together. Hello, right. we're live. Barry, we're live. Oh, God. <laughs> Hi. Hey, welcome to the show. We're live. This is uh, episode, what did we say? Seven. Well, seven. This seven. is episode, episode seven. seven. Uh, what is that number in Spanish? <laughs> oh, so you were giving me crap last time because I didn't, I didn't know my Spanish, uh, Spanish. I know it in German. <laughs> I lived in Germany. I didn't live in Spain. Okay, it's okay. Well, anyway. Episode 7. Hello, Jackie. Yes. Uh, this is Hi, episode Jackie's 7. <laughs> Barry and Gina doing it live. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, right here. Yep. Uh, I am, for those of you who don't know me, I am a relationship expert. Uh, I, well, I'm a matchmaker. I have a company right. in, in Los Angeles called Exclusive hey, Introductions. Matthew. It's men who hire me, and I my job is to search for the most perfect woman on the planet for them. And I've had my <laughs> company for 10 years, and I've written a book, and I've had a couple of radio shows, and now we do this live stream and we talk about love and dating and whatever we want to talk about every whatever, Tuesday night. Because it's our show. And we love it when you ask us questions. <laughs> yes, and we'll be asking you some questions soon so yes, or input. Because tonight input. we're going to be talking about your mo. we want to hear what your most outrageous, right. weirdest, boldest thing you've ever done in your life. Not necessarily relationship centric, no, but life in general. And just, yeah, it doesn't have to be relationship right. wise. It could be just anything. I mean, I'm yeah. going to have to really think because I've done so many crazy <laughs> things in my life. Well, do you want to do crazy what you think or crazy other people think? I don't know. I guess we'll have to decide. So we're going to be asking yes, you. It's going to be an interactive night yeah. tonight. And Barry's going to share too. So tell everybody, for my audience that don't right. know you, we've got, way, we're shooting on two. On two phones, yes. yes. So my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I'm more coach, counselor, helping you fix what's not working so then you go out and attract somebody. So we don't compete in a way. We actually overlap, which is kind of cool. Yes. Um, cool. I have two books out now. Um, first book is a bestseller. Second book is Collaborative. came out last month. And there's a third one, Brewing, which I'm scared shitless about oh Cause really because I feel something bigger is coming so it's oh. like I've done like getting the first is this two books the, the third book on your own this one this is the second book on my own third book in the series because the, the, the second book was collaborative wasn't my own book right I know so, so this will be my second my own book Woo! but the thing it's is having deal. done the other book and then hey, this, Sherry. it's like having these two books has like cleared the decks for the deep stuff and now it's like Okay. So we'll see, dive. we'll see what it is. I'm not sure what it is yet. I'm just being open to it. So I'm just being in the flow. So uh, for those of you, oh, well, let me just say this really quick. Yeah. I know some people are looking for things to do for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we'll just touch on that really quick. Yes. And I know because you were talking about agape normally does something, but, but they're, they're not. not because they right. don't have a place to do it. So I know that there's a big Malibu, Malibu event happening. There is. Fundraiser. Um, you can look on my page. You can scroll down. I posted it, shared Good. it. Um, I don't know. Have you shared it? I have not it? shared it yet. No, I'll go find it and share um, it as well. Yes. So uh, if you want to do that, I actually might do that during the day. And then I mm -hmm. think I'm going to go over to the neighbor's house later. So those are my okay. Thanksgiving <laughs> plans. So if you want to do something Thanksgiving, go and do that and volunteer and frankly, and help. I would also say if you want to do something good for Thanksgiving, go feed the homeless. Yes. I Okay. You know, this is the, a, mis the mission downtown or other place like that. Does well, it, that no? sounds lovely, doesn't it? I know. But, but here's what I've learned. Mm -hmm. A couple things about that. One is that... First of all, all those places get booked up. Like, they can't even take your help right now. Oh, right. Like, I've tried, and if you haven't, like, signed up and, you know, got reserved From your spot to help, yeah. you can't help at this point, usually. Yeah. The other thing is last year, because I had women over the house last year, and we made all these lunches for the homeless, mm -hmm. and I went around on Thanksgiving and passed them out, and I was so embarrassed in front of the homeless because here I had these, like, what I thought was good, these shitty little brown bag lunches, sandwiches and juices and chips. And this other girl just pulls up in her car and opens her trunk. And she's got full on like oh. styrofoam <laughs> containers with like full on turkey, turkey dinners. In. Yes. Yeah. So mine just looked shitty and puny and embarrassing. So, so I don't do that apparently. Don't do that either. <laughs> if you want to help the homeless, do it on a day they're not expecting it. Okay. There you go. There's, there's lesson, that. Lesson, lesson learned. Lesson learned. <laughs> All right. So Barry, I'm going to throw yeah. it to you. Oh, okay. What is... Off the top of your head, what is the most outrageous thing that you can talk about and tell us uh, that you've ever done in your life? Well, let me start. I'll start with a bit of something a little less outrageous to start the to okay. rolling. And I guess we have to define outrageous. I so, guess whatever outrageous is to you. I'll, we want I'll to know what with, yours okay. is, Nicolette, and yours, Trey, and, and Deanna, yours, Deanna. We want and to know what your, and, and, and your most you, outrageous yeah. thing are. Well, two, two yeah. I'll throw out right at the top of my head because they're the ones that I know I'm aware of that I've done that are pretty outrageous. One is I've jumped out of a plane with, with, with a free fall jump parachute without any previous training. Oh, wow. So that was fun. Wow. <laughs> that was fun. And what prompted it? Um, I was in a leadership course that we'd done some ropes course out in the Outward Bound stuff, and I jumped out of a tree on a well, not jumped out of a tree, I jumped off a tree in a belay line with harness, and I thought, this is the same as being on a parachute, so let me just take it from 60 feet, 
to 16,000 feet. Wow, that is scary. <laughs> Actually, uh, 12,000 feet. Wow. So that's one. And the second okay. one was I I left I left home, lived in three other countries. I left home at how old? Um, 30. I left. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, let me <laughs> That young. was bold. Uh, 20, 19, 20. Okay. It was first move. I moved here when I was 24. Okay. So oh, wow. one suitcase came out in 81, never went back. I was, I was... 21 when I moved here. Okay. Yeah. But you moved domestically. You didn't move internationally. No, I did not. I just moved from Memphis <laughs> to Los Angeles. Right. But it was a big deal when you're 21. Okay. Yeah, I understand. I yeah. understand. Anyway, I think that my, you know, I was trying to think about this. I So I, you know, for me, I have taken bold, I do bold things all the time. I, she does. I do. I do. Uh, I do. So, you know, because I say, you know, I was raised eating embarrassment for breakfast. Because my mother is outrageous. If you know uh-huh. my mother, you know, some of you remember Is that where you do. get it from? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. She makes me look like, you know, <laughs> timid little, you know. Anyway, right. so I'm, not, I'm never embarrassed. But I think that the one of the coolest things I ever did, which was super ballsy, especially when I was so young. I'd mm-hmm. just gotten out here to L.A. And, you know, that's another thing we kind of talked about last week about, like, I, and I posted something on my Instagram at the Gina Hendrix. Uh, it's a new Instagram if you want to follow me. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah. um, I posted, like, date as if you're a tourist in your own town. I like that. Yeah, I know. And and if you think about it, you know, we wait okay. until we're traveling to do these, like, bold things. Right. And we meet people when we're traveling a lot of times. So why not just do it while we're here? Anyway, I digress. So in the, no, early, that's, that's cool, in, like in that. the early 90s, mm-hmm. um, when I was, you know, wide-eyed kid, uh, the uh, was it? Oh, it was the Grammys. So the Grammys were happening. Yeah. I lived in West Hollywood, and I was a flight attendant at the time. And I one think of your I was previous like, careers? Yeah, one of my previous. I've had a few myself for nine years for Delta. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and so anyway, so I knew the Grammys were happening. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go to one of the parties. I think I was 22, 23. Mm-hmm. And so what I did, I came up with this idea. I called E Entertainment and whoever answered the phone. And I said, hey, if I wanted to get into the Grammy party tonight, like how could I, what's a good one to go to and what should I say to get in? Damn, and that's bold. I'm bold. <laughs> and, and without any, any sort of like pretense, like saying, I'm so-and-so, I need no, to get this party. I just laid it out there. I love it. Whoever answered the phone. That was great. And so whoever I talked to said to go to the A&M party on um, La Brea. Mm-hmm. Which is now the Jim Henson Studios, and uh, and and I said, and then how? Do, what name should I use to get in? And they said, you uh, say you're with Peter Gabriel. Oh, <laughs> and he, that was a big year for him. Whatever right. it was, like 92, 91, 92, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so I rounded up my girlfriend to go, and she was like, you know, a hot Playboy model. And <laughs> yeah, we all got decked out. We dressed the part, and we get there, and she's so nervous. And there's check-in tables, you know, like. Right. A to G and, you know, H to... Whatever it was, yeah. L, M yeah, yeah. or whatever it was. And so I was like, come up with me. Because, I mean, it would have been easier if she'd walked up with me because she's right. like a hot model. <laughs> and, uh, but you, I looked pretty cute then. I was going to say, you, know? like, you yeah. were what? You, <laughs> but I wasn't a Playboy model, you the for chaperone. God's sakes. Right, no. <laughs> uh, anyway, but I march up to the table with confidence because confidence is key when you're going to bullshit people. Yes. I marched up to the table and I said, um, and they're like, yes. And I go, um, yes, we're with Peter Gabriel. And my friend's like over in the corner going, they're never going to believe this. And she was freaking out. And like, they're never going to buy it. I you love it. should just leave. And then I think they had to call somebody else over. you got to play it. If you're going to do this, you, you got to go all in. Yeah. So, um, so <laughs> I'm waiting with confidence. And she's like thinking, oh, Jesus, what are we doing? And she's mortified. And and I said, you know, he said he's going to meet us. He's not here yet. He should have like a plus, a plus one or a plus two for my, me and my girlfriend. And they go, here you go. Here you go. Woo-hoo. I like that. I and love I like, it. Come on. Let's go in. So we got to go in and nice. hobnob with, um, I don't know, everybody that was Prince and Billy Ray Cyrus. And I mean. People were still alive then. People <laughs> who were still some alive in the early 90s. Yes. Yeah. Some of the disappearances then. So that was then. it. And wow. And that was one of the biggest and probably the more recent, I mean, more like early on yeah. times I did it. And then I think the other time was when I started my matchmaking business, you mm-hmm. know, in the beginning, before it was like more referral based, I was cold calling billionaires. Like literally That's cold calling billionaires. <laughs> yeah. So somebody would know a billionaire and I'm talking like a celebrity a lot of times, billionaire that you know, mm-hmm. you know, uh, who has maybe been a judge on Shark Tank. Uh-uh. <laughs> anyway, well-known billionaires. Yep. And I would have their cell number and I would call them up and I wouldn't tell them how I got their number. And I would just... I like it. 
tell them about my matchmaking business. And they were shocked that I <laughs> had the nerve to call them on their cell phones and not reveal who get. And, you know, the majority of those guys are super cool. Super, right. super cool. Especially, um, you don't, especially you don't approach them as a fan. Right. No. I'm right. just like, here I am. And, you know, and what I'm shocked about is so many men, they don't know who I am. They don't know. And they're just telling me all their business about the kind of ladies they like, <laughs> big boobs, skinny. I mean, whatever it is. They're it. just talking freely. I could be somebody, you know, like right. scamming them. And I'm not. I'm totally legit. And, you know, either it came down to they either wanted to, uh, were interested in what I had to say. And, or they weren't, mm-hmm. and and I even talked to called Paul Allen once. You know, Paul Allen oh, yeah. passed away recently. I yeah. called. This is a funny story. So I called. So I had Paul Allen's number for years. Like I had Paul Allen's number probably for about three or four years, and I would call periodically. I never like call like a weirdo or stalker. Right. Got to just space it out. Yes. Going to do it. Right. So I'd call periodically, and and I think one time I got his assistant. Most of the time, I never got an answer. Right. And uh, one night. On a fluke, I was bored. I was sitting on my couch, and I was going through my phone. It's like seven o'clock, seven thirty at night, and uh, I just go, "Oh, Paul Allen." I just think I'll just call him. I'm laying on my couch. I'm like, you know, not right. in mode of like for. Just like whatever, call because I knew he wasn't gonna answer. Right. And he goes, "Hello, not. hello, this is Paul." He says, and I was like, <laughs> "Mr. Allen, hello." And I had to like switch gears and and I pitched him. Um, but nah, that didn't work for him. He was, he said he wasn't interested and it was mm-hmm. all good. And then I sent right. him a text. Thank you so much. And he was super nice. And anyway, so there you go. Very cool. Very cool. Sometimes you got to just go for it, man. I think one of the Life fun things, uh, one of the fun things I got to do just in terms of celebrity stuff was I, I got to go to the DNC in 2008, um, as going with a, with a bunch of people in the Guppy Choir. And I was a photographer because one of my previous career I was a professional photographer. And I got to hang out basically this close to Will I Am, Black Eyed Peas, and John Legend. Very cool. For like four days. Oh, wow. That was pretty cool. That's very cool. It wasn't necessarily outrageous. It was just, well, it was outrageous in the sense like not my normal thing. Right. But it's real sweet. So that was cool to hang out with them. Do you have anything that you've done that you regret? How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> thinking, hmm, hmm. There's things I wish I'd done differently, certainly. But in terms of things I'm... What's the first thing that comes to mind that you wish you had done differently? Okay, this is going to go deep into my past. Oh, no. And okay. It, and, and, well, yeah. I'll say this. And this is all hindsight stuff. I wished I I hadn't turned the other cheek at school. I wish I had not been let myself be bullied. Oh, really? So, I mean, the truth is, and I, and I said this in my teaching and my coaching, is that I'm grateful because where I am now in my life, I would, be, I would never give this up for something else. Yeah, it'd be nice to have more money and a nice car and a big right. house in the hills. But in terms of the quality of life I have, I know it happened because of my journey. Right. Absolutely. So, so if I had stood up to the bullies, I would have become one of them. Right. So my life so may have gone so a whole different path. So then why do you wish you had? If Just the pain I went through then. I mean, it, looking back, right. I mean, there were certain things I went through. It was like that. I would have preferred not to go through that to get here. Right. But I know I had to get through, go through that to get here, which is kind of like, you know, I, I couldn't change it. Right. And it's the whole thing, you know, it's the whole butterfly effect in time travel stuff. You can't go back and change one thing. It changes everything. That's true. That's very um, true. That one, and and I wish I'd done my relationships differently, but I didn't. Right, because that's what taught me. What, that's what taught me to get here. I mean, I don't Again. know. I don't know that I would have done my relationships differently, but <laughs> I might have made better choices about who I got well, that's involved. The thing. With. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> same thing in a way. Right, right. So, so from that point of view, there's things. But I, I don't differently. regret them ending at all. There's no. not one person I could say, "God, he got away." <laughs> Uh, no. I say thank God he got away. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be nice if I got a chance to go back more in, more more often to England before my mum passed away. That would have been great too. Right. So those things are regrets in that sense, but not like I said, Oh, I'm so embarrassed or so screwed up. At least not like I can remember right now. And then I'm gonna switch gears so that we stay positive so you don't cry. <laughs> thank you. Um I what's the thing what's the thing you're most <laughs> proud of in your life? And I we want to hear from you. I want you guys to tell yeah, us. Yeah, Jermaine, Ronit, James, tell us. Yeah, put stuff in. What you most proud of in your life? Um I would say I think really what I'm proud about is what I do now. It, work, took, it, yeah. took, it took me seven different careers to get to this point. Right. And I didn't have a clue that I was heading there but because of my, my path through the personal growth and through my relationship history and my screw-ups and everything else. I kind of got, I backed into what I'm doing now because it's the right thing to do. So my, when my first book came out, I was spending, I spent about three months in disbelief that I even wrote anything. It was like, this is me? I wrote and a book? And it's a big deal. It is. I know. But now I look back and I'm actually proud of it. Yeah. It was something that I'd accomplished. I wrote a 400-page book that... I shouldn't have been able to do it somehow, you know? Mm. I mean, there's rules in my right. head. Like, you know, I'm right. not an author. I'm not a writer. I mean, so maybe even writing the book is one of your 
biggest accomplishments that you're in a way it is because it's the last one. goes hand in right because that's a legacy that will, right you know super lives beyond you. me right yes. beyond you exactly for okay. me what am i most proud of i mean it's pretty cool when i get people together and they get married and they have babies and i think man there's now a kid walking the earth because of me indirectly in indirectly because right, you weren't right, involved right. in the sexual act no I, come on now <laughs> just be clear because, you know, men take it to a different level. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I guess, really? I guess any regrets I have, you know, might be, you know, I, I actually think it's all about, like, letting fear shut me down. And I don't, mm. and I'm not one to let fear shut me down too no. often. No, you're not. But there are times where, like, I was, when I, early 2000s, I wanted to start an online dating site. And I wish I had then. Mm -hmm. But I talked to so many people, and and I wasn't a tech person. I was a celebrity stylist then, my second career. <laughs> Flight attendant, We're celebrity teasing stylist, out the careers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so I just let fear shut me down. Okay. And I wish I hadn't. I wish I'd just start. I mean, because who knows? You know, um, who knows? If I'd started an a online dating site in the early 2000s where I'd be now, I don't know. You don't know, right? Right. You don't know. I mean, because I wish I'd, you know, don't start my career years ago, but of course I didn't have the skill set I have now. Right. So. Yeah. There's no way I would have been able right. to do so what I do. So that's the challenge right. of this yeah. thing is look back at what will we change? It's really hard to do it from a place of going, if we change something, what's it going to affect now? True. So, yeah, hindsight 2020 is great. I mean, yeah, if I knew now, if I knew when I was 20, what I know now, I might be a whole different thing. Well, that's, that's the old you know, saying, right. isn't it? You know? Yeah. So. So. Okay, so I want to go back to dating like you're a tourist in your town. Okay. Um, because I think that more people probably should be doing that, right? I think it's a good idea, yeah. yeah. So, what so would, explain what that means yeah, to, for, I, the, for I the listening say, audience. Sure. I would say for men, it means, like, think about if you were on vacation mm -hmm. and you ran into a woman you were interested in. Would you seize the moment quicker? Would you... Or would you string it out? No, you're going to seize the moment quicker because you're not right. there for very long. You know. And you're probably <clears throat> not going to just like chit-chat with her on the phone for a while. Or you're not going to just ask her to probably, if you're on vacation, might not even do a coffee. You probably, because you're more adventurous, you're on vacation, you're probably going to plan something kind of fun. Something that mm -hmm. maybe you've always wanted to do. Right. Right? Okay. Don't you think? I like the idea, yeah. I think. And then I think for women, the same thing. Like... If a, if a stranger asks you out when you're on vacation, whether he's too young or seems like an inappropriate match, you're probably more inclined to say yes because it's an adventure. We look at traveling like an adventure. And when we and do that... And it's a short time frame too, so you're not invested yes. for the long term. Right. So you're like, what the heck? I'll why just not? go. Why not? But why yeah. can't we adapt that same attitude here in our own town? That's a very good question. I think, I think, a lot of, I think for a lot of us, we have this thing about we're comfortable in our space and our neighborhoods. So if we do something bad in a neighborhood, it sticks to us. Like if we do something like where we, I don't know, we, we embarrass ourselves or we crash our car or something or do something stupid in a neighborhood, it's going to haunt us. So do if you really think you think that? I think a lot of people, they're not willing to stretch to that holiday spirit or that vacation play where they live because it's almost like if they, get, if they go somewhere else then it's like what's the, what's like you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas idea right well, and some guess, of that's the drive it too I people should live their, their lives like that well yeah and especially now because you can't because of social media you, you know what happens in Vegas goes on social media to, yeah there, there's <laughs> so, that too but I think yeah. that so like I noticed that like with men on the dating apps mm -hmm. you know um, they, they just are very oh goodness me whoa Oh, your cable, woo. yes. <laughs> what happened? Did I pull my cord? I think you pulled your cord a bit too far. I pulled yes. my cord too far. A okay. low connection. Low connect available. Okay, good. I'm yes. back in business. You know what I noticed also? I um, have not gotten... I'm waving to people. <laughs> when people comment, for some reason, I don't see it on my phone until afterwards. That's odd. Isn't it's, that odd? So, I don't know. Are you sure they're commenting when it's live or in the replay? I think live. Like, I, like Darlene last time. She had commented through the show, and I mm. didn't read see, see any of it. So. Not sure. That's weird. Anyway. Hello, Ariane. <laughs> Facebook um, Live is an interesting so, environment. So, because this is expanding on what we talked about last week, which was the woman, Paula, that I know. Yes. She had come out of a bad marriage 15 years, mm -hmm. and now she's, you know, and she was like, out of sexless marriage for 15 years, and I did a podcast where we really did the podcast this oh, week. Oh, good. Yes. So it's good to go. Um, and but first, she was, the first date in the app, she met this guy? First date on the oh, app, God, she yeah. met this you guy. last week's broadcast. That was, a, that was quite a story. Quite a story. You'll have to listen to my podcast when I release it and get the full story. But, I mean, essentially, you know, she just was living life 
with like abandon. Right. Right. She in the moment, right in the there. Moment, yeah. Which is exactly what you do when you're on vacation. Absolutely. When you're like a tourist in your own town. Oh, yeah. So I just think that there's something to be said for, you know, again, I've said it before, shaking up your snow globe and like reviving your your zeal and your zest for dating and life because when you're when you go go into it and you're so jaded and and so mm -hmm. okay so the guys i was going to tell you so oh yes a couple of the guys like i've talked to on the apps um <laughs> they just bo they're boring and the majority of men women want and women will confirm this and women want they don't care about money as much as they want somebody who's just fun and could come up with fun things. And interesting and yeah, enjoyable. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. You know, I mean, coffee, I usually say, I don't do coffee. It's so boring. I know you like to do coffee. It's just you a, like to do coffee because you want to save money. Do well, you I want to say? I would say do coffee because there's less investment financially up front. Right. That's what I mean. But way. why not be a little bit, if you want to, if you don't want the financial investment up front, that's cool. But why not say, hey, there's a cool museum. Let's go walk around. Yeah, that works too. Like just up the ante. Yeah. And I know ladies would confirm this. Okay. I think my comments are just not coming through. I guarantee you, <laughs> I swear to God. When I you know, review after, you'll see the I comments. Because I know my ladies and I know they agree with me right now. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, so I just say, if you, if guys like don't want to spend money, they can at least get creative about it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. No, I, th I, I, I agree with you on that point because for me, I've defaulted to that one because the thing is, it's always been the thing about you have to go on an expensive dinner date type thing. So I'd like to just tune it down. One, because hey, look, do it where, and the same thing the museum does work because it's something that's not expensive. It's something that's daytime and it's also public. Yeah. So if you're meeting someone who's going to be a stalker, it's safer to meet them publicly and get off the, get out of it quick. Right. Whereas if you go for a day, romantic dinner at night and you're hanging out, you know, somewhere quiet and nobody else around, for some women that's a pretty risky experience for them. I don't know. Come on. For some. I mean, a restaurant's a public place for God's right. sakes. Oh, so Nicolette. Thank saying, you. I know. I know see? my ladies. I do know my ladies. <laughs> I know so argument. Nicolette, but wouldn't you be cool like with a guy saying, "Hey, let's go to a museum." I mean, we'll that's a good alternative. This cable, I'm worried about your, your... Sorry, I know. you're. So Barry gets mad because I have this knot. Well, it's not so much that. It's just that every time you like, put your hand on it, the phone wobbles. <laughs> he's all organized and I'm not. What can I say? I your system Yes. Stuff. See, Nicolette. So, okay, Nicolette. I'm, see? Okay, I get there you. There you go. All so right. So just up the ante. So like this mm -hmm. one guy said, um, like his, like I was like, so I always say to them, what do you like to do for fun? Right. Okay? And... What? Are you connected? No, to my, I am connected. Okay, that's Look, the other that's mic. That's a two mic. That's all oh, right. Yeah. Anyway, Split, yeah. I say, what do you like to do for fun? <laughs> and they're like, oh, you know, or I even ask women this when I'm going to set them up with a client. And they'll be like, I like reading. I like, you know, what? I'm just like, okay, that's, yeah, that's how are you going to do that with a partner? <laughs> right. Anyway, that's not what I mean when I'm asking the question, folks. Um, and so he's, this one guy said he likes to volunteer for, and I don't want to reveal the group in case anybody knows him, but it's like a volunteer group that he does. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's awesome. Yep. They feed the homeless and they do cool things like that. So, okay, great. All right, cool. Well, I don't know. We got off the phone. I think we were on the phone. Yeah, we got off the phone and whatever. I don't know. He's going to circle back to me with a plan to do something. I said, okay, cool. Well, think of something fun and let's do it. I say that. Right. Because I'm trying to throw him a bone. I'm trying to say, don't come back <laughs> to me up. with some boring yeah, ass shit. Something. Because right. I'm not going to want to do that. Right. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> otherwise I'll stay home with my dogs and drink wine and fool around the computer. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so anyway, so then he texts me and he says, hey, I was wondering if you would want to volunteer with my group, blah, 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 blah. And... I, and I thought he meant Thanksgiving. So I thought, that sounds, that's kind of cool. I would mm -hmm. love to do that Thanksgiving. Sure. But then he didn't mean Thanksgiving. He just meant anytime. Anytime. Mm. But it wasn't very creative of him. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, he didn't set it up. He just said, go there. Well, no. And yeah, that's okay, yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was sort of like he was phoning a date in. It was so weird. <laughs> like he was not trying to be imaginative or creative right. in any way. It was the one thing that he liked to do. The one thing. The one thing. He mm. never told me anything. And he's new to L.A., but new by like three years. So you would still think you would be like... Exploring and exploring checking these out. Exploring yeah. and interested and right. excited about things. And so, yeah. Mm. Mm. No, not, not good. good. No. Not good. So now, next time in lieu of coffee, what are you going to ask the woman to do? Well, I think an art show or a museum, something that would be fun to go art watch. Art show, museum. There's lots of fun things. Art Fle walks flea in Flea markets. Yeah. I mean, there's just, you just, guys have to dig a little deeper and get a little creative. That's all. Yeah, yes, That's all. We do, we do. You do put a little <laughs> more effort into it. But so many men just aren't stepping up their game these days. Indeed, indeed. And so what could women do, do you think, to like revive their zest and zeal for dating? Um, huh. Raise the standards. 
you, I would, you I would think, say, I would you, say, I, would, I don't know. I think when well, it's I mean, so, 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 well, in terms of this, I, I mean, in terms of like be untraditional, like try something different, which is means like if the guy is saying, you know, maybe he doesn't know what to do, to drop the hint, like I'd love to. You know, I'm in the museum for a long time. I'd love to go. So you drop. Sure. So you make it here. Make it her. Like make it almost feel like he's making the choice, right? But she's the one suggesting it. Well, I I do think this is like two Play people working together. Yeah. So if you're on the phone, I think you want you know I don't I think when when it comes to the dating apps, let's talk about the dating apps. I think that you do a little bit of messaging and then try to move it to a call oh, as quick absolutely. as possible. Yes. And then you do a call, but you do a call and keep it as brief as possible. You don't want it's to drag just, it on. It's a step one, two, three. And you don't want to get off the call without making a, plan, a date, a plan, right? Right. I hate it when they go, oh, well, I'll get okay. back to you. It's like, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, next. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I think that that's what a guy should do. And so when you're on the fa- phone for that limited time, use mm-hmm. that time to just sort of find out what do you like to do for fun? That what works. do you like to do yeah. for fun? And then if a man's really listening to the woman, what she's interested in, mm-hmm. and not in his head about what he likes to do and just invite her to that, I think that is, you know, a lot of guys say they struggle with getting a, a date, you know? It's true. They get a lot of swipes, and they can't get from the swipe to a date. Well, the thing is, for a lot of men, it is kind of... Some men, again, this is not all men, but some men will play the numbers game, Fair. and some men will basically be single focused. Like they'll find someone they're going to pursue that and see where it goes, and then they get cut off. It doesn't go anywhere, or she doesn't get back to him in the next few days. And he goes, "Okay, next." But you know on. why? It's part of the reason is because he's boring. Well, some men also don't have much of an attention span. Right. So, like after one day of not responding, they go next and move on somebody else, and they won't even bother waiting for a comeback. I, I think that there could be that, but I actually think there's more men that are sitting around waiting and hoping the women get back to them mm-hmm. than you would think, and the Probably. and the and the guys are like, "Oh, she doesn't like me." When the truth is. She still might like you if you just put a little effort into it. So, you know, like have some interesting conversation. You know, I mean, I can't tell you how many guys say, how's your weekend? (laughs) What's up? (laughs) Or what's up? That's on this thing right here that we were going to talk about in a minute too. Seven ridiculous mistakes that are destroying intimacy and ruining your relationships. That's one of the things we're going to talk about. But we're also going to talk about the dumb, three dumb things that guys do, I guess guys and girls do on Tinder when oh, they God, ask yeah. each other or any there's a few, dating thing really there's, a, well, there's yeah. a few of those so, but one of them is just that so here, here's the thing I popped this up for us tonight right. Tinder talk stupid online dating questions and and, and how, how to she handle, handle them okay. okay or how to handle them let's say so the one number one date stupid thing somebody says is hey what's up <laughs> do you ever say that Barry not do usually no usually you I do said, that no, no I said not usually but you do sometimes um, You're representing all men here, Barry. Well, I, I might. I mean, I say something on the on the, on the same arena. So, like, you know, how you how's, how's life going? What I you bet you're to? a how your we how's your weekend guy. <laughs> you're a how's your weekend guy. No, I have. Well, you, don't your go, week going? you don't go. Hey, hey, Gina. I see you got a lot of dogs. No, I don't do that. Where'd you get them all? I mean, that's at least a at least at least they've done some scanning. They checked out your pictures. Yeah, least, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. super generic. Right. You know Someone's what I mean? Got, Nicolette's got a. But what are what what are more interesting questions to ask when you know nothing or very little about them? Well, that like I just said, Nicolette, a good thing is hopefully somebody's put something in their profile, or even if, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> very funny, hearty, har har. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so <laughs> that, I'm laughing at someone's comment, so nobody yeah, knows what, what I'm I, making yeah. comments. We are on so, two phones, by the way. Matthew so that's why. said, "Hey, what's up?" What's up? Hey, Lizzie. Well, so my Matthew was on my sc- so, so Matthew was on oh. mine. Now he's on yours. So he's jumping jump around. He's jumping around. He's a fidget. So he can say- annoy me. No, <laughs> just kidding. So I, okay. So Nicolette, to answer your question, I think that it, hopefully somebody has put info on their profile. And what I say to women uh, is, if a guy has not put any information on his profile, if he's not put any effort into it, he's probably not going to put much effort into the date right. or dating at all. So I kind of skip over those guys, no matter how cute they are. And I know women, if they're cute, doesn't matter. They'll well, still yeah. But the thing is, I still but I, I, I still think guy give me some information. Well, and also a man should take the effort also to to, to prove he's actually looked at her profile besides the pictures. Right. Like you know, it's like she says she traveled to Nepal. What was that like? Right. So do any so actually do something that is more than just oh she's cute I'll just go like I mean like guys really score whatever. points with me when they notice I have an old truck and they're like is that your old truck and I'm like why yes it is my old <laughs> truck as a matter of fact now you tell the you whole know? world how to approach you that's good <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying. 
find things that in her pictures that you can make unique conversations about. Yes. That'll get more women to respond to you out of the gate. And never be defensive. So many guys are like defensive out of the gate. Like, here's the next one on here. Are you a murderer? Not recently. I think women probably would ask that about a guy. I, yeah. I think guys might say that too. Who knows? People do come up with some stupid shit. I, I think that's it. more of women to men than... Well, I hate it when the guys ask me, and, and I know you guys may not agree with this, and you really may not agree with this, but mm. I hate it when the guys ask me, so are you on here looking for clients? Oh. I hate that. And I usually don't respond to it because to me, honestly, it feels like they're very insecure. It feels like that well, comes from a place of fear. It's also the... They they also may be by thinking that you're not there for yourself, that you're there for some other reason, which is they're right. not reading you properly. Because right. I, I have the same thing. Because in my profile, I talk about what I do. Right. So I think a lot of times that may scare women off. They're going like, "He's a coach and he's out here looking for women." That doesn't feel. I mean, and I can feel that in a way. Right. So it's almost in a place of, well, do I simply just simply take that off the profile, or do I do something different? No, I think you need to be. And this is what I tell everybody. Right. It's, a, it's you weed people out the more honest you are Absolutely. on your profile. Yes. So if like marriage is your goal, put it. If it's you want to get pregnant? Put it. I mean, you don't want to put, I want to get pregnant. I wouldn't <laughs> On the first it that date, way. No. no. But you might want to say your goal is to have children. And right. I give this advice to some women, and they're just like, this one girl, in particular, not women. A lot of times, if women take my advice to the letter, they usually get what they want. Like, good. I'm good at this stuff. But, 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 and you're good at it as well. But, um, but, this girl I was talking to, and she's very fear-based anyway. And mm -hmm. she's just like, oh, I don't want to put picture of me and my dog that might like turn somebody off or I don't want to put that I want to get married and have a baby that turns off I'm like girl you need to turn them off there's so many people on the dating apps right. these days like it is literally like so many people on the dating apps these days and so the best way you can weed people out is by being almost eccentric about who you are be so extreme that they will either love you or hate you yes be clear absolutely because then you're only going to attract those who are attracted to what you have to offer absolutely you know mm -hmm. so it's like i show my animals my old truck i mean you know mm -hmm. and and i think it, there's nothing wrong with being specific about what you're looking for it's more important these days on the apps than ever because how do you weed people out otherwise right it's true so another thing and this Ooh, goes i know yeah. don't you hate <laughs> this question on yeah. our list here we're just if you're just tuning in we're looking at right now we're looking at um these things that says stupid online dating questions or things that people say. Right. So the last one on the list is, oh, after hey, what's up? Is oh, no, after, after that you, one. Right, right, right. <laughs> why are you on here? Yeah. Don't we hate that question? It's like, why do you think? And why the hell are you on here? <laughs> right. Or well, it's the same thing. Like, why are you single? Well, why are you single? You know, I mean, yeah. I know they ask you for a different reason. And ask me certainly as a matchmaker. The Gina, why are you single? And they'll ask you that. So let mm -hmm. me just answer this. question. Please, go ahead. <laughs> um, I think that there's a difference in being single and available, right? Mm -hmm. And while I am single, I've grown my business over 10 years, and I've done really well at it, and it's hard to be a solopreneur because I've been laser, laser focused on my business and yeah. growing my business, and that's the truth. But so perhaps that's why I'm still single, or maybe I don't make enough time for a relationship. I mean, I think that I – here's what I know. Mm -hmm. The truth is – Yes. The truth is, if we're going to be really honest, is Please. that if you really want to be in a relationship, you will be. Yeah. It's really true. And that's the thing, I mean, from my perspective, because it was similar in the similar business arena, is it is challenging to go on dates with people who I can see right through their patterns. And same thing. That's one of the problems. And, be, and, problem, and being, right? being, being a, having a background in counseling and coaching and a blend of those things, it's, it's nice to be with somebody who I don't need to do any effort with. Right. And that's the thing for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely out meeting women in different environments. For coffee. Or socially, or just crossing no, paths with them, kidding. or different places, riding the bikes, everything. Yeah. But the, for me, the thing about it I, I appreciate is is meeting somebody who stands on their own two feet that owns their own stuff. Because right. most people, people, not women in particular, but people, are so looking for someone to fix them or to be... Oh, or I couldn't to, agree more. To be, they're broken, and they're not going to take responsibility well, for their own selves. And that goes hand in hand with just being boring. They I've want got, somebody well, yeah. else to... You Entertain know, them and make them and, feel good and right. all that stuff. Absolutely, or come up yeah. with a plan. It's like, oh, God, yeah. I mean, and... and that might sound weird. Like that might sound like, well, isn't that what you just said, Gina? You were looking for somebody to be not boring, <laughs> but it's because I'm not. I'm not boring. You want to be. In, you want to make sure you're both entertaining each other. Yeah, like yeah. yeah you Race to the bar, so I'm going to meet you up there. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, right. I've got low network connection. Maybe that's yeah. why it gets it might fuzzy. Be, it might be the reason because I'm on. I'm. On, I'm just on the network. I'm, I'm on. I'm, I'm on uh, T-Mobile. I'm uh, not on the oh, Wi-Fi. Oh, you're not on my Wi-Fi because it's too far away. 
Okay, that so may be what the problem is. Okay. What time is it, Bear? It is seven forty five. Oh, and look, I know. <laughs> I'm just crazy. Okay, so <laughs> let's we're gonna wrap this up shortly, but yes. before we do, let's talk really quickly about seven ridiculous mistakes Ooh. that are destroying intimacy and ruining your relationships. She's finding some good articles. <laughs> I found some good things to talk about. Number one, playing games designed to boost your ego and avoiding rejection. Oh, I cringe on that one. It's like so frustrating. It's like, why not be transparent? Because the thing about it is when you play games and you manipulate and you try to get your ego boosted, it puts you in a very precarious situation. Because when you have that ego boost, if you're not getting your ego boosted, you're going to be upset. Right. And so if the other person, if you're using the other person to boost your own ego, at some point in time, either they're going to wise up or they're going to get, or they're going to give up trying to do it and you're going to feel deflated. That's actually a codependent model, which I have an old issue with. But so playing those games just to boost your own ego, get me to a counselor. <laughs> we're going to do three. We're going to talk about three of these and okay. then we'll save we'll the up. other yeah. four for the last, for the next time. Yeah. But I think that, you know, in that going back to Paula, who we talked mm -hmm. about last week, who met the guy, first guy she met on Tinder and now they're engaged. He bought a house for her and this whole whirlwind romance. Unbelievable. <laughs> You'll have right. to listen to my podcast to hear all about it. But anyway, it's going to be good. Um, she's great. She's fabulous. And she's in her fifties. So it's not like she's a young spring chicken. He's in his late fifties now too, but, they're having a whirlwind romance. So you can find love at any age. You just gotta, she told me like, yeah. you gotta let go of the handrails. And oh, yeah. so that's and another <laughs> thing that, that goes back to, she was, she also said, I was not playing any games. She no. said, I was totally honest with him yep. about, well, she wasn't looking for, the irony is she wasn't looking for a relationship. Although you said she, I don't think she was in that moment. No, she I wasn't think, in the moment. But, but what she was doing though, which I loved, was that she was basically going, you know what? I've had enough of playing small. I've been in that partial right, relationship. I'm I was dead. Big. To, you basically felt dead in that relationship. Right. And she said, you know what? I need to get out and play and get dive in deep. And I think that was a commitment she made to herself that was received by the guy she met. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. and she also, you know, I say communication is key. Oh, so yeah, absolutely. It's like if you, women, guys can't read your mind. Uh, so you've <laughs> got to just say it like it is. Oh, you've indeed, You've got to yeah. be honest. Oh, thank hey. you. Hi, Christine. Christina, nice to meet you. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I haven't seen her. Um, she's been busy doing movies, I think. Oh, really? Some of you. you do, man, you're doing oh, man. Some, she's busy, I know. Yes. Hi, Christine. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, you've got to just keep it. you got to keep it real, mm -hmm. and you got to keep it honest. Right. And you've got to have a really clear communication. Because if you don't, here, it's like... Here's one thing. If you're honest and you tell the truth, there's nothing to hide. Right. Which means if somebody asks you a question and you forgot what you told them last time, you're in trouble. So just tell the truth that way when someone asks you the question another time, you don't have to remember, what did I tell him last time? Right. When you make up stories, you're going to get caught out. That's simple. And, and you know, feed your own ego. You don't need anybody right. else to feed your ego, for God's sakes. Well, and you've got Instagram for that. Quite <laughs> frankly. Okay, Indeed, number two, yeah, yeah. Setting unrealistic uh, and unexpressed expectations that make it impossible for you to find real love. Ooh. That keeps you sitting there forever. <laughs> Trust me, if, I you don't, if you don't get out and play and, have, and meet people, you're going to be stuck right. in this place like, they'll, they'll never find me. No, the, the right one. Never, nobody's ever nobody's good, good enough. enough. Oh, nobody's God. ever good enough. I mean, you and, you lose know, out. and I think that I think that a lot of times you've got to, you know, because now it's unfortunate. I mean, the apps are great for a lot of reasons, but they're mm -hmm. also not great for a lot of reasons, which right. is we've become voyeurs and we, we were like perpetually window shopping all the time, right? right. It's like, ugh. I could never look at that guy's teeth for like more than a second. Right. Or, yeah, you know, whatever we're saying about people. Whatever you know, that is, yeah. On, the, on our screen. But I think that um, I think that we need to like stop and not maybe swipe so fast. And, well, that's the thing. And that, actually try to dig a little deeper. That is one of the challenges people have is because there's so much abundant choice on these apps. Right. That it's almost impossible to go kind of check each one because some people are such a hurry. Right. They swipe, 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 and okay. they miss four or five good chances I know. every time. So do you think, I think, you know, in a way, I think you should have your profile super, super specific, like super specific, exactly what you're looking for, and then just swipe right on everybody to see who responds to your specific criteria. That could be a very full thought. calendar. Could be, but maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, that's the th well, you mean so swipe so swiping isn't dating. So swiping is just getting their attention so yeah. they look at your profile and swiping go yes or no. Swiping is so that basically if you make your criteria super helicopters, I know, yeah, we've got the helicopters they're coming over. to get us, they're coming to get us. Um, Welcome to Venice. Make your criteria very specific. Mm -hmm. You're looking for marriage, you're looking for kids, you're looking for whatever. And then you just swipe right to everybody. 
Um, just and try it as a little please, test. And please upload your profile looking for your partner in crime. That is worn out. It's been oh. so many times. Oh, I never. I don't know. I've never. No, people are just like looking for my partner in crime. It's it's. I, I did that for a while, and I was like, sorry, so many other profiles went. Not well, or what about what men put all the time, which is, I'd like a woman who can dress up and look great in a t-shirt and jeans. Right. Like, that's tired, worn out, too. And the other one I'd also recommend you don't put on there is looking for my other half. because okay. I Because that, to me, is the whole... You're like, you're not whole. Right. Right. <laughs> that's the whole I core of my work with codependence. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Codependence is, the, is the, yeah, it's horrible. What's a good thing somebody should put? I look, look for someone to go play with. Or someone to grow with, or someone play with. I don't think or that's gr- or good. Or grow, or grow with someone who can, you know, wants to go on the adventure of life with me. Right, that's true. Because now you sound fun. Right. Yeah, but you got to be sure, be sure you're going on an adventure. Well, yeah, don't just say it, not do it. No, right. So many people <laughs> talk a good game. Okay, it's number true. three. This is gonna be our last one. Yes. We're wrap up for our holiday edition. Right. Um, number three, and we're talking about what is like, uh, well, like. Ridiculous mistakes that will destroy intimacy and ruin your relationships. Right. Okay, so number three, I got to scroll back to it now. There it is. Giving away your power and putting your partner on a pedestal. Oof. This is a perfect way to end it. Yeah. We're talking about codependency. Indeed. Talking about you know, I think that some people are so in love with love that they don't ever stop to even realize if they like the person. Right, and also they just want to love the person so much. Well, and the, but the other part of that too is that they are in such a place where they don't believe that they are worth loving themselves. They keep putting the love on the other person, saying, "When if I love them enough, they'll love me." Right. Which is this bargaining chip, which sucks. If I just text him right. and tell him oh, I'm thinking of him, he'll text mm. me back, and now he'll realize he really likes me. Doesn't work like that, this lady. Is, this is the codependent trap that sucks the life out of you. Right. And so, when you give away your power that way, it's because you don't trust your own power, you don't trust your own authority, you don't trust your own love. That's. I mean, I do a lot of work with self love now. My work. It wasn't what I plan on doing. The relationship work I do, but self love is such a fundamental piece because we forget that we are worth loving ourselves. Right. If we love ourselves first, one, we won't settle for what's less than we deserve, and secondly, we'll hold it for what's really worthy of us. But love yourself in a way that it does not become narcissist. A well, narcissist. Yeah. Well, the ego so, driven way. Yes. Because yeah. I've experienced. People yeah. who love themselves a little too much, if you know what that's I'm ego, saying. That's ego love, not right. real love. Right, so it's always got to be a good, <laughs> a good, happy middle ground where you feel you just you're fulfilled with your own life. Because I can tell, I can tell women that I know the men I work with, they want a woman who, who you know, looks great, but is also like happy with her life and interesting. Yes. I mean, listen, I've made the mistake of setting my clients up with girls who were super beautiful and looked the part. But then the guys are like, they're so boring. So I can't. I've met tell some you, of them yeah, myself. Yeah, I can't tell you how how uh, important it is for a partner, and he, and it, and it works the same way I said earlier about the men. It's like mm-hmm. so many men are boring. It's like <laughs> you've got to be interesting. You've got to you've got to have diverse interests. You've got to be right. passionate about something or many things. The it's more, true. the better, actually. Yeah. And the more full you are, the more interesting you'll be and enticing you'll be to a partner. I agree with you. And the more you won't get entangled in a codependent relationship where you're this, putting the person on a pedestal. And this whole thing about pedestals is like the problem with pedestal. Pe- the problem with pedestals is you can fall off. Yes. And so when you have that pedestal arrangement with your partner, if you put your partner on a pedestal, guarantee you within depending how long you're together, but guarantee you some point in the relationship you're going to discover that what you did what you did by putting on a pedestal is see all their flaws and it's going to suck the life out of you because you're going to feel so upset that you thought this person was so amazing and they're not because you made up in your mind that they were better than they really are. Right. And that's and, a mistaken approach. And then, and I think in closing, I think that, um, I feel like we're in that bridesmaid episode where they're cheersing <laughs> to her and they all want, both want to get the last word and they keep going. <laughs> it's like, and in closing, oh, and in closing, and in, and in closing. Anyway, no, I just have one final thought. And if you yeah. have a final thought after my final thought, that's fine, too. That's very kind uh, of you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, anyway, so, uh, dang, what was my final thought? Oh. Shit, 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 shit. What was, it was a good thought. We're too. talking about uh, they're not as good as they thought they were going to be. Oh, yes. Um, sort of, yes. Dang it. What was my final thought? Oh, it's about liking them. It's about ah. liking them. Yeah. I think that so many people, like they're so attract, like a hot guy or a hot girl, and they're like so stuck on like 
you know, getting into a relationship with this person because they're hot and they're beautiful right. or they're whatever they are, but they're not stopping long enough first to see if they actually like them. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah, you're attracted to them. You like want to kiss them and make out with them and they're raw. But do you like them? Do you respect them? Are they a good person? And I think you could you hang s- out with them for twenty years? Yeah, right. Yeah. Could you hang out with them twenty years? If they become ugly and gross, do you like this person? Do you respect them? So I think that uh, I think that to keep expectations real and not put something uh, someone on a pedestal, you have to just have mutual respect and you well, genuinely like them as a friend. And I would so. I would add a PS to that, which is basically. <laughs> and then I have a PPS to that. Well, because like what happened recently with what happened in the fires in Malibu. I've got friends yeah. of mine who lost their homes. Yeah. And so if you're attached to a person's presentation, like they look a certain way, they have a certain environment, or they great a great car, what happens if that stuff gets taken away? Yeah, absolutely. Can you still hang with them? So the question is, as you said exactly, is can you like them enough that if something happened, you wouldn't go, okay, I'm out? Right. Now, if they did something to you, like they cheated on you, or they abused you, or they were becoming an addict of some sort, that's a different story. Right. But if they basically, you're buying into their presentation and, the, and their accessories. And that's all. And you don't yeah. like them. You're just in it for you're in trouble. the outer shell. Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah. All right. Here, here. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Superpowers activated. All right, you guys. We're out here. I got to go get some kittens. Uh, oh, yes. Yes. Jeez. So, By the way, if you have a home for three kittens. Yes. Come, Check out her wall on Facebook. Come find me. Come look my page up and yeah. connect with a lot of animals on my page because I do that too. She I does. I connect people with people. I connect people with animals. I love it. I'm a connector. So anyway, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> yes, happy happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And we'll see you here next Tuesday. Love you. See Over you again. Take care. See ya. Bye.